She's only got a few more days to stand. It's kind of a bittersweet part of the process, but then again, it's also a very special part of the process. There's no use doing something that you don't see it out to the end. She's beautiful out here. Hi neighbors and welcome to Miracle Farm 1927 Homestead. We are so thankful to have you with us here today. Today we are stripping our sorghum and getting ready to make sorghum molasses in a couple days. Uh, we take the leaves off so it doesn't make the syrup bitter. If we, if we leave them on, it'll leave a taste. So we're gonna take them off, all the, try to get as far up the top as we can, and we're gonna be feeding these leaves to our livestock. And Righteous is gonna give you a demonstration of how we do that. So we're just getting started here, and like Miracle was saying, it's just a little bit sad. We've been working out here all summer so hard, and to just start stripping the leaves off, but that sorghum molasses is going to be so good when we get to taste it. Look at the beautiful heads. Even, even though she's tall, she still can't hardly get to the top. Papaw's out here giving us a hand. He's always doing something. There's an idea of what it looks like as we're getting started. Leanne just came by to say hi. And then I started handing her stalks. Now she's now she's stripping too. <laughs> Today we are out here on our second day of the sorghum harvesting week and today we are cutting down the sorghum. Yesterday we stripped it, today we're going to cut it, lay it on the trailer, and then take all the tops off. We save the tops in boxes just like we do the leaves and we're going to feed it to our animals in the winter time. So we'll save them. The seed heads from sorghum are actually a feed source. A lot of people raise short cane just to get the tops off of it and feed to their livestock we ever grew sorghum I grew tobacco so there's a lot of different tools and a lot of different people saying different methods that you could cut down sorghum cane with but we use my tobacco hatchets or some people call them tobacco knives but we call them hatchets around here so I'll do a demo of how easy it is to use this one good swing <laughs> and, and the other thing is, is somebody asked us, uh, isn't there a machine that will take all these down? 
and there absolutely is, but we choose not to do it that way because this isn't just about cutting down sorghum. Later on in the video, you're going to see where we've got friends coming over. Well, we have friends here now. <laughs> we, ha we have friends here now, and uh, Papaw's getting ready, and uh, everybody wants to feel useful and needed and fellowship, and that's why we do it like this. It's not about getting it down as fast as we can. It's about the fellowship. Okay, they're chopping and Joey's putting them on the trailer and Papa's cutting the heads off. Got our farmer friend Tony here with us now. Well, Back. Got three rows done. And they're working on the rest of them. And it's turning out a whole lot more than we thought it would. We got a big round of helpers now. Our cousin Josh, my boss man Wayne, they showed up to hit lend a hand. About done. I believe we got a trailer load full. <laughs> Just two more rows to go. Man, it looks like we got a work crew with all these trucks going up and down the driveway. Well, I guess we do have a work crew. Okay. Well, we're about down to the last few stalks, too. Better come down here before they get to the very end. Welcome neighbors, we're going to start squeezing our sorghum today and uh, just going to fill you in on a little bit of what what's going on here, but uh, I'm sure this engine looks like it's a big overkill to pull a cane mill with, but uh, we just got this cane mill and uh, it's not geared right to pull with a PTO off a tractor. It was turning 27 rounds a minute trying to pull it uh, with a tractor, so we had to come up with something to slow it down because you don't want to turn it. But uh, five or six, seven rounds a minute because it's just too fast. So this engine here is what we pull the sawmill with and it's uh, an old truck engine and it's got a uh, transmission on it so we can gear it down. So it's turned about seven rounds a minute, which I'd like to be a little bit slower, but uh, that's the best we can do. And we'll idle this engine all the way down. So uh, th that's what we've been up against. So we're hoping uh, we'll come up with some kind of gear box, a uh, gear reduction to go on it so we can pull it with a tractor so we don't have to pull it with such a big engine next year. Here's our cane mill. This is a, uh, actually a rear end out from under a truck. It's a two speed rear end. This is a high and low, but we run in low and we're still turning seven rounds a minute with it. So. But uh, somebody's just took an old rear end and cut the axles off of it on both ends and, and they've geared up to it here. So right here's where the, the horse pole would have went. Right here at this, on this angled piece right here, the pole would have been, but the, the mill would have to be a lot higher so it would clear the uh, person that was feeding it in's head. So uh, we can lower it back down now, Ben, so we don't have to have the, the pole run across here. So. 
but uh, anyway this meal had been sitting a long time and uh, we washed it out and uh, put uh, cooking oil in the barns and uh, get all the it has some uh, acorns and stuff where the squirrels have been uh, living in it but uh, anyway we've washed all that out and we we're fixing to run some cane in it to just to clean the residue out before we start squeezing we're fixing to crank the engine up and we're going to run some uh, st few stalks of cane through it just to clean the, I've uh, polished these uh, rollers here but they've uh, got a little light rust back on them so we're going to run some cane through it just to clean that off. And Papaw's our feeder. Hey Papaw! Yeah? Hey, I'll ask you this again. Are we making you do this? No, I'm looking forward hey, to it. You've been looking forward to this all day? You've been here for about three hours waiting for it, haven't yeah. you? <laughs> we just, you know, like I said, people think we're forcing you to be out here, and we just want to let people know that you love doing this kind of thing. Yeah. Beats looking at the walls. That's right. Yeah. See how slow it's going. Last year our meal wasn't quite this tight and uh, it wasted a lot of juice, but this year it's, it's a flattener out. Now that they run the, uh, the scrub up, you can see where it's shiny now, nice and clean. This is the side where it comes out. This is the first real cane that they're putting through. Got the screen on the pot now. The pot's been all scrubbed. It's dry when it comes through. That's the way you want it to look, you want it to squish it. That's what you call this, is squish. It's going into the pot. It'll get filtered twice before it goes into the vat. Over here straining it. 
So we have a strainer underneath that it goes through. Plus it has to go through a cheesecloth. So we're getting all the impurities out, or as many as we possibly can. And then it's running into this nice clean barrel where it'll be stored overnight before we put it in the vat. And that's why we do it late in the evening because this has got to stay cool. This is juice, just like orange juice. And if it gets hot, it'll ferment. So not only we do it in the evening, but we'll put ice uh, barrels in here to keep it cold too. So it'll be, it'll be really chilled in the morning. It'll be freezing our fingers when we're putting it in the vat in the morning. So this is how we strain it. So we just made the announcement that we are only 98 gallons away. We've got our two first gallons already in. Probably a little bit more. Here, you can look up the side of the barrel. Look in there. 97 and a half more gallons to go. We're going to do announcements like they do on the Grinch. How close we are to Christmas. <laughs> So we're putting the cloths in this bucket and then we have a special board over here made. We're gonna hang them on and I have a water hose right there that I'm gonna wash them off with to get the dirt off of them and then bring them back over here and keep using them. All of our tools are ready to go. The boys are over here working away. Peppy's supervising. Peppy, what you doing? Make sure you get David, I don't watch it. <laughs> with us again. And our nice lovely bystanders. Mama's over here printing them out. Some more helpers over here. We got us a nice wash station this year. We won't do that. When you plant a little bit of cane and you do a little bit of work, <laughs> it brings the whole community together. What'd you say? I said it's just like back in the old days when everybody farmed. You had, you had two or three families get together to do one thing. One big event. Bringing history back to life. Yeah, sure are. and see how many gallons we got left to do. Let's see, we're about up to the 25 gallon line. So we got about 25 more to go, maybe a little less. Good morning, and this is morning four, and uh, this is our morning crew that showed up with us this morning. One of our boys already had to get up and go to work, so he'll be back at lunchtime, and we have got 100 gallons of cane, and we still got all that over there left over. So we could almost had two vats, but we're just going to do one, 
and Miracle and I are fixing to uh, use these buckets here. They're nice and clean. The vat's been scoured and we're going to put all 100 gallons in this vat. These are the ice bottles that we had in it last night to keep it cool. Things green around here. Especially the view. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cold. Uh -huh. Cross the fingers. This is green. Oh. Yeah, behind the combine, you know. So we're just now starting to skim. We got the fire raging in here. Yeah, I remember that. And Wayne, our neighbor and farmer neighbor, Miracle's uh, boss man, he brought his daddy skimmer. How, when's the last time that was used, Wayne? 30 years ago. 30 years. So it's, going, it's getting a brand new job today. So the whole time this is cooking, we'll be taking the uh, skimmings, they call it. It's really just the bubbles on the top, but they call it skimmings. Yeah, Daddy always done this. I've never done it. He wouldn't let you near that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Had to get it just right. Yeah, he, he took care of that. I, m I remember seeing him do it. Another thing about it just getting started, see how green? It's nice and green. And this evening it'll be nice and dark brown. He punched them holes in there with a nail. I remember him building that thing up in the shop. Really? Oh, yeah. Must have been a piece of copper left over from where he made his vat. So that one's copper? Yeah, yeah. Okay. His vat was copper. end of the day here at the molasses vat everything's winding down into the last minutes we're probably about 30 minutes away from having that golden goodness but we have our friends here with us today well, howdy howdy people and I personally want to welcome Glenn and April from Lazy Acres and down in the description below there will be a link to their homestead and site and you gotta go there, guys. You will love them. They are wonderful people, and they milk goats and cows, and all. And she's got the most funny names for all of her animals that we just love. A whole lot more creative than we are on the names and stuff. But I wanted to talk to April and Glenn and see why did they 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 seen us on YouTube. We saw that we live close together. Now why would y'all come out here? Look how sweet 
It's hard to find family members anymore. Exactly. And this family is the most wholesome, the most purest of heart, and God-fearing people. I love y'all. Well, we love you, too. You come here and you feel welcome. See, even Pepper. <laughs> he saw the herd of boys going through the background. <laughs> They're here for the, the boys are here for the food. Yeah, yeah. mainly. <laughs> hey, I came for the lemonade. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody in your family ever done molasses and sorghum? Yep, my grandpa used to raise cane and done molasses and all that. I was eight when they passed away, so I know I was really young because for the pace, probably two or three years before they died, they didn't do it because he had a bad heart. Yeah, yeah. But I loved it. <laughs> so, so this brings back some memories? It does. It brings back some awful good memories. I love my grandma and grandpa. Here, my family tell it. I was born raising cane. <laughs> <laughs> He's, a, he's always a, raising some cane. Yeah. That's what these boys is doing right here. That's what all of us youngins yeah. do. It's a boy thing. It is, yeah, it is. It's a boy thing. It's a boy thing. So, so we're going to uh, move on to the cane making, and they're oh. going to be here with us, and we're going to have some supper. And boy, is the molasses good. <laughs> we got some last year. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, thanks, y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Guys, it's getting down to the last few moments, making the uh, molasses. It's at 220. We're looking for 230 degrees. We got a lot of good help here. We got some people that's made molasses before. See if you can see it down here. Everybody's just standing around waiting for something good. Right? Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Right. We've been working y'all hard all day, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you two been working real hard. We got the jars over here already. They are uh, testing the temperature. Like I said, we are um, getting it up to 230. And normally what they do with these bats is they pick them up and move them off. But this bat is made to where it's got a little lip on the inside. And we're going to put this pan in between the vat and the fire and fill it full of water so it will maintain its temperature. It won't get too hot and scorch because that's a real bad thing. It's real sugary now and it can scorch. They're sliding the pan under it. They're going to get the water. They're going to start pulling her off. She is thick and she's ready to go. Put your arm up under there so it don't spray up. Oh, we need to keep some of it in the back. For tastings right now. Who's tasted it and who ain't? I need I need people telling me what it tastes like. Here, Dave. Can you move that bucket this way a little bit? Oh, yeah. I don't know. They're, uh, they're, they're on the table. It's a little hot. Yeah, it's harder than it tastes good. It tastes all right. Nah, it tastes good. It's got a little taste in it, but it'll go out when it cools down. We are so grateful for these helpers that stuck it out at the end when your eyeballs are burning off your head. <laughs> We got it coming out already. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This will get Things ready to go. Thank Mama's ready with the jars. Our buddies are over here cheering us on. Are you is it good? Is it good? Are you sure? I burnt, I burnt my lips, so I can't taste now. <laughs>
pushing it back here to the back so we can get it out. We're going to put it in this jar here so it'll catch the foam and then we'll run it out again. So we got the molasses done and we're all out here kind of celebrating around the vat. Are there certain things? Certain hey, what happened to the fan? Dark fat. That's how you feel, right? <laughs>